how does the law treat alcohol when it comes to these injury cases, these accidents? Well, to break it all down for us, Tom Sinus from Sinus Dreamus Law Firm. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Todd. Let's talk a little bit about, I mean, there are lots of layers of this onion when alcohol is involved in a crash. You got criminal liability, you got civil liability. You know, what are the rules for intoxication? That number has moved you know, over the years. Uh, break it down for us. There are a lot of layers. That's a very good way to put it. And, and it really, the fact that there are so many layers speaks to the seriousness of what we're talking about here. I, I think the best way to think of it is kind of how you just alluded to. In accidents involving alcohol and injury, there almost always is an overlap between the two halves of our justice system. Our justice system has a criminal justice system, uh, the one where people can be incarcerated, uh, when they've committed certain crimes and it has a civil justice system which usually involves claims for money involving people and drunk driving cases almost always involve both as as people i think commonly know in our criminal justice system we have standards for when someone is criminally liable for operating a vehicle under the influence if they are above 0 0.08 that's considered operating under the influence we have a special criminal statute that many people refer to as super drunk, and that is 0.17, which of course increases people's criminal liability. And then on top of that, where criminal offenses become most serious with alcohol is when there is alcohol involved and someone either dies or is injured. Those cases are felony offenses and they can subject uh, the drunk driver to as many as five or even 10 years in prison. And so, and of course, then following that raises the other half of our justice system, uh, which is the civil justice system. There's a lot to unpack there. So when a drunk driver injures someone else, what kind of legal liability is key there? I mean, is it the criminal? Is it the civil? It, it's great. It's a really good question because the answer is it's both. And these two claims are really interrelated. So, for example, under our civil law, we, we recognize that if someone has committed a, a, a criminal violation, then that criminal violation is evidence, and often case conclusive, oftentimes conclusive evidence, that the driver was negligent, was careless. So by operating under the influence of alcohol, you've established liability most likely in a criminal and civil case. There are then overlapping monetary fines. Of course, there are court fines and court costs for drunk driving cases. There are also can be very serious claims for restitution in a criminal case. And then on top of that, there is the civil liability. And it is worth noting here that our bankruptcy code treats drunk driving offenses very differently and civil judgments and restitutions are not dischargeable in bankruptcy. So that just illustrates the point that these two type of claims overlap and they continue to overlap throughout the, the whole course of a case that may flow from drunk driving. You know, there's a question that I've always pondered that I haven't had the chance to ask a lawyer until now. <laughs> what if the victim is also intoxicated? So you were injured, you got hit by a drunk driver, but you were drunk in your vehicle. How does the law treat that? Great question. We have a special state statute on that very issue, and it was one that was passed back in 19... 96. And what it says is that it is an absolute defense in a case for death or injury if a person was intoxicated and their intoxication was more than 50% the reason for their injury or death. So if the intoxication played more than 50% of the reason in how the victim was injured or killed, then our statute, very strict statute, says that the victim uh, cannot pursue a claim. In other words, the defendant has an absolute defense, as the statute is, is, is written. That raises the other question, well, what if the victim's intoxication is less than 50% of the reason for the event that caused the injury or the death? Well, in that case, the victim's recovery in a civil case is reduced by the percentage of their fault. So let's just make up a hypothetical number and say that the victim's damages were only $100,000 and the jury or the judge concluded that the victim's intoxication was 45% 
of the reason for the event that caused the injury. Well, the victim's recovery, you would reduce it by 45% of that $100,000. But if you exceed that 50% mark, as I said earlier, then the victim's claim simply disappears and the defendant has a complete defense. So you are uh, correct to wonder because it is an unusual question, but it does happen where you have a case where the victim is intoxicated and perhaps the defendant is intoxicated. There are also cases where the defendant is not intoxicated and the victim is. And this statute and the case law interpreting it is generally how this is dealt with under Michigan law. And I'm sure there's a way they can tell 50% higher or lower, but boy, I wouldn't know how they would begin. <laughs> That's a really good question. It isn't oftentimes easy to resolve. And if it can't be resolved, the jury usually will be the one to decide that question. Sometimes the parties will let the judge decide that question. You're right. Sometimes it can be more obvious than others. Sometimes it's more subtle. So that's a that's a way of saying these cases involving alcohol, we started by talking about how serious they are mm -hmm. um, when you're thinking about the most obvious kind. But any any type of injury or death case that involves alcohol on either side of the case is, is something that requires a, a deep level of analysis of both the facts of the case and the law that applies. Well, as always, I learn something every time we talk, Tom. I appreciate the answer. It's fascinating stuff. If people want to learn more, how can they get a hold of you? They can uh, find us online at www.sinusdramus.com. They can shoot us an email at info at sinusdramus.com, or they can give us a call at 616-301-3333.